Hey everybody, you're listening to the BTW Media Podcast, the show that explores the stories, innovations, and insights for people who love technology and the internet. Today we are honored to have Anwar Amwafiza with us. She's the senior core network engineer with over the decade of experience in telecommunications and network operations. We met Anwar at Ripe 89 in Prague, and in this episode, she will share her professional journey, the challenges she's faced, and how she's building network resilience in Palestine. Hello, Anwar, and welcome to BTW Media. Really nice to see you at Ripe 89 in this really beautiful city, Prague. And um, first, please introduce a little bit of yourself to our audience. Hi, nice to meet you, and thank you for this uh, invitation and interview. This is Anwar Abu Afife. I work as a core operations engineer. I started working in the telecom sector since 2013. I have already studied my uh, partial degree in uh, communication engineering and then I have um, studied my master in innovation and uh, entrepreneurship MBA. So you're already in this industry for 11 years? Yeah, almost 11 years. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> so here I prepared one question for you. Are you ready? Mm, yes. <laughs> okay, so the question is, in Palestine, network infrastructure development faces a number of unique challenges, especially given resources and uh, technological constraints. As a senior core network engineer, how do you address these challenges and ensure your company core network is functioning efficiently? Let me first introduce a brief introduction about how the situation is running in Palestine in general. In Palestine, we can say we are divided into West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem. Each each one of these areas has a different situation than the other. So, for instance, and you may already know from the news how Gaza is uh, already surrounded by a big siege, West Bank is different. It's um, like uh, you have separated uh, places related to Palestinians and the other people. However, about Jerusalem, it's also almost divided. So the situation is different. You cannot go freely from West Bank to Jerusalem, or to Gaza. So this applies also to the infrastructure and the equipment. So that if you want to, for example, import some of the infrastructures or some of the equipment, even to make an RMA for a card, all of these things are subject to a long and complicated and complex approval processes from different parties. Mm -hmm. It's also not very smooth to have traveling inside Palestine and this is, applies for both the humans and for the equipment. So we actually face many constraints or challenges. First, if you want to go about licensing, the provided uh, frequencies, the type of technologies, you have to specify everything and each one of these has to be subject to approval. Can you give me a, a specific case. Yes, for instance, okay, if we're talking about Gaza, considering also again the current situation, Gaza is running out of electricity. So you have to have a, like uh, the alternative solution is to run the service with you a fuel. They also have very limited amount of fuel. Also, if you have uh, something, the, the fiber, you, you need the fiber connections just to run the uh, telecommunication services. And if you have to repair these damages, it is not safe for the team. And it is also, you have to make like, um, to choose the best place, to make a coordination and then to do so. And for instance, even in West Bank or any other one of the sites, we have many sites are distributed, not only in Palestine, also in out of Palestine, because I'm telling you, and I have already mentioned that we have one of the equipment is not allowed to enter the country. So we have have, like we have also a site in Jordan. So if you want to replace one of the equipment or to make an RMA for a card, for instance, you have to go in this uh, complicated process and mm -hmm. waiting the shipment, waiting for approvals, all Is of it these a really things. complicated hierarchy there? Yeah. Through all the process? Yeah, it's not just related to the company itself. It's related to the policy? um, policies. Probably. Yes, maybe you mentioned already about 4G and 5G. I can tell you that. At Gaza, still using only 2G. And only we, 2G? yes. <laughs> and regarding a 3G project, mm -hmm. it, we started running it on. Uh, 2018 and I was one of those uh, who worked on that project and I'm so proud of that. Mm -hmm. It was so complicated mm -hmm. and it wasn't easy to have this uh, done. 
you can see that we're running already on a legacy uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Currently, our team and our company is uh, trying and doing their best just to have, uh, and even on the governmental level, they are paying a lot of effort just to make 4G and 5G NSA network uh, running. But I'm not sure what would happen mm -hmm. considering the current uh, situation that everybody is already um, aware of it. Is it an emergency or is it urgent to change 2G to 4G or 5G? Actually, we have an emergency situation running mm -hmm. right now. And we're not sure how stable will the network will be. Mm -hmm. As I'm not sure if you have uh, read about in the news how many times our network was mm -hmm disrupted and disconnected mm -hmm. and the service was affected and as you know that telecommunication service is affecting all the types of services like mm -hmm. emergency hospitals education wow. because you need this for online for some jobs and mm -hmm. for all the aspects of life it's just something to do with the bandwidth also the bandwidth is uh, subject to license and yeah, for sure. approvals mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything is down to the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it takes a long time to get yeah. the new policies. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, when um, in Palestine, when they started to run out the 2G network, which mm -hmm. is they face the same issue with the provided frequencies. So they have like like a crazy thing they have because we are limited in the frequencies and they want to re reuse this the frequencies. They have they decided to put as much base stations or towers yes. as possible. Yes. And generally, you don't have to have that much uh, amount of uh, towers, but we do because in order to make sure that you have coverage in almost most of the areas. Okay, I understand that. Mm. So let's move on to the next part. So apart from the question I asked you, do you have any topics that you are really cared about and want to share some idea of us? Okay, if we're talking about technology in general and you have to consider the stuff, Mm -hmm. humans. Most of us, for instance, if I can talk about myself and other colleagues, we related to different areas in Palestine. And moving from our work to home and uh, from home to the work, yes. it takes us a long journey because you're passing many checkpoints and many workarounds just mm -hmm. to arrive to your uh, home. So the total journey took you, or the trip, we can say, one hour and a half. It mm -hmm. takes me sometimes six hours. Oh, really? So it is not safe and it's a little bit sometimes risky to find a, an open road and just to pass through the home or something. Mm -hmm. So I think, and in my, my point of view, if peace come again mm -hmm. and we have peaceful in environment, mm -hmm. everything would be better. I mean, you can uh, have good way to work yeah. and good environment. Mm -hmm. You will not be worried all the time that you <laughs> will lose the service. You will um, uh, go late. You will be have uh, unexpected conditions. Yes, so the context is the key. Like everyone is relying on this all the fundamental things that because yes. you don't have this really quiet environment to develop yeah. or innovation. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. That is because why. actually we have the minds. Mm -hmm. We have very hard work engineers and mm -hmm. uh, employees. Mm -hmm. We work day and night. We don't care about how much we paid. Actually, we pay so much effort than we, ha we are mm -hmm. already paid because mm -hmm. we love this. We, yes, love. we are giving okay. to our country, we are living to our community, to our company, and we have the feeling that this is our home, so we have to give as much as we can. Yes, I'm deeply moved by your tone, actually. So that is why I need to interview you, that you're truly linked there, and you have the real emotion and the experience of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you view the policy of that? Because you say that the process of that is really long. And do you have some figured out how to stress this? I think political things are so complicated. I think it's better that political people can discuss mm -hmm. this. As the work of in this industry, so do you have some outlet, like from where to start? Do you have some advice of that? Advice to whom? To the policymakers. <laughs> the only thing that I can say is that we have to look for a peaceful solution for everybody. Mm -hmm. And someone has to fix all these issues around us. Mm -hmm. And of course, me as a normal people at the end, I worry about my life, my mom, my two sisters and mm -hmm. my community, my mm -hmm. colleagues. All of us have our families and we want to live peacefully and to work in a good environment. We need to have the space for our minds to, to think 
out of the box and mm-hmm. to have yes. innovation solutions, yes. mm-hmm. not only to start, you sometimes start it, for instance, to, to make some process or to think of something or to have a training or to develop and improve your skills. Yes. However, you found yourself in an emergency case that the network is disconnected. Some people are complaining. So you, me, or I'm other, the team, it depends on each one's duties. He left everything and go just to fix mm-hmm. the issues that mm-hmm. arise. Mm-hmm. We don't have that a peaceful and a good environment just to let your mind think out of the box mm-hmm. or think in an, an innovation way. That makes sense, actually. Yes, of course. We are very emotionally connected and yeah. uh, you see what is happening around yeah. and it is really uh, very bad. Yeah, especially to the public, to the mass. Yes. Everyone knows what the problem is. But mm, we, yes. Probably yeah. we cannot yeah. solve it. You see the people are just thinking how can they feed themselves Mm -hmm. and how they can find a safe place for themselves. This is the end of our invitation and we are really happy to have you here and I'm sure that our audience at BTW Media will learn a lot from your opinion and I hope we can continue to exchange the latest technological development at the next conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I'm so happy to be with you. Me too. Thanks for joining us for another episode. 